This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hey everyone, it is time for the first Thunder Junction draft here on the channel. Let's dive right in. Okay, so we get a dual land, which, you know, not the greatest thing to open in most limited formats. It's kind of funny, I think the deserts in this format might just be better because they synergize with things going on in the format, whereas these are just good fixing. You know, they're nice cards, but nothing, n not something you want to first pick basically ever. Um, so we've got some good cards though. I think Cunning Coyote, Clear Shot, and Marauding Sphinx are all pretty good. Given what formats have looked like lately, <laughs> I'm pretty tempted to just go towards a super aggro card in Cunning Coyote. Um, you know, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two haste, has this plot upside too. Clear Shot's a good removal spell um, that's on the bonus sheet. And, you know, I think Spinewood's Paladin's pretty good. Lone Shark is too, but, uh, you know, let's just, let's just draft aggro, see what happens. <laughs> okay, so this is a pretty interesting card, Demonic Ruckus. Um, I think it's probably a playable aura because it's so efficient and it replaces itself. Shoot the Sheriff's pretty good. Um, you know, it's sometimes not going to kill things, which can be annoying. Um, probably just take Scorching Shot. The only thing about the shot that's a little awkward is, like, if we don't end up a base red deck, it can be kind of hard to cast. We do have Skewer the Critics. This is a very <laughs> removal-heavy pack, because we've also got Skullduggery, Trick Shot, Shoot the Sheriff. Yeah, this is just, like, all removal. Um, I think Scorching Shot is probably slightly better than Skewer the Critics. So I think that's where I'm going to go. Um, yeah. Okay. This is a card that interests me a lot because it has such a high ceiling. Like, if you can copy an opposing removal spell and redirect an opposing removal spell, like, that's nuts. But it's also super reactive, so it's not a card I love taking super early. Um, Beast Bond Outcaster looks pretty good to me. That might be where I go here and sort of hope for the red-green signpost to wheel. I do think Irascible Wolverine's great um, as far as commons go, but I think the Outcaster's probably better. It just seems like it's three mana, three, three, draw a card like all the time, whereas this is like three mana, three, two, draw a card sometimes, you know? So it, it just seems like it'll it'll work out. Um, Ankle Biter's, you know, not bad. But yeah, let's take a green card here. It's a strong enough one. Okay. So, I don't love Brimstone Roundup. I mean, I think it has potential, but limited formats lately have been dominated by things that actually have to add to the board, and it doesn't do it on its own. Um, you kind of need to wait till you can play it and another spell in the same turn to feel like you're getting there. Slickshot Lockpicker is real good, um, and I think it's better than the red cards in this pack, so I think it's what we take. Uh, Sheriff of Safe Passage, I'm not super enthused about. Interested to see how it does. I just don't love that it's like vanilla creature is its, its upside, you know. I think Geyser Drake's pretty good, but I think the Lock Picker is better. Like, you know, Snapcaster Mage downgraded in most ways, but like it's not even strictly worse since you can never play or almost never play Snapcaster Mage with all your mana up, and you can with this if you uh, plot it. Okay, I like Vault Plunderer a fair bit. Mine Raider is pretty good. Um, so far, we don't have... Well, I guess Slick Shot Lock Picker is a, uh, uh, an outlaw. The Djinn's nothing special. Shackle Slinger is interesting, and if we're in blue-red, you know, it does the thing. You know, it's supposed to be the two-spell deck. Um, I just feel like Mine Raider is going to be better on average than Shackle Slinger. I do like this signpost. And, but yeah, I think we'll take a Mine Raider here. I do think Lock Picker is better than Outcaster, but, uh, you know, we'll see what's open. It feels like red's open enough. Cunning Coyote should definitely count as an outlaw for, you know, flavor reasons. Um, okay, so here's a Lone Shark. I think I snagged that thing up. We saw one of those earlier. In fact, no, this is not our the first pack we had, but it seems easy enough to draw with. Uh, you know, it's kind of the same thing as Outcaster. Like, you can set it up to draw you a card 
pretty easily. Um, so, and it's like a passable card otherwise. Feels like maybe blue red's where I want to be because I think like one play in the heist is fine in that kind of deck, and the rope master's not unplayable. Okay, man, I love skullduggery, but I don't think that's you know where we want to go right now. Um, Raucous Entertainer is pretty good. Um, I think better than failed fording is. The fording's fine, but. I think Entertainer is good enough to grab here. Like, putting counters on your stuff is seems pretty nice. I'm curious to see how this pans out. My initial impression is that I don't think it's amazing, just because it's hard to always get the value you need out of it. But we'll just take a we'll just take the two drop here. All right, so there's a Thunder Salvo. I think I'd probably take it over Harrier Strix. Red seems more secure than our other colors. I mean... Yeah, I mean, this will be our fourth red card, and every red card is a card that I feel like the first copy basically always makes the cut. And that's not true of our other colors. I do like Harrier Strix a fair bit, especially if you're in a crime deck. Um, but we'll just take the removal, the one that pays us off for casting multiple spells. Are we red-green? Are we red-blue? I don't know, but I think this will be fine in either one. Okay, so we do have a nice land here in the form of a desert. It's also a clear shot, though. Okay, Green's real open, because I think Spinewood's Paladin and Clear Shot are both, like, very good. I think we got to take Clear Shot over Lush Oasis and the Paladin. Like, it's just such a good removal spell. And that may lock us into green. Like, it's not this alone that's locking us into green. It's seeing three very playable green cards, a couple of which I think are way more than playable. Not to mention a dual land. Um, but, yeah, I think you got to take Clear Shot there. Feels like red-green is where we've ended up. All right, so Bristlepack Sentry is interesting. Um, if you can buff it, it can attack on its own, unlike most versions of this effect that we've seen lately. So I think it's what we take over Trick Shot. I think it's pretty good. I mean, if you can get some mercenaries or some equipment or some counters, that's when things get really good with it. But it's, you know, kind of okay. I mean, I think we want to be an aggro deck, and it's, it's not great if you're... Uh, if you can't buff it, it's more of a defensive card, but yeah. All right, Ankle Biter. I'm on board with that. Rise of the Varmints is definitely a build-around type deal. All right, Free Strider Commando is not terrible, so... I would say green is quite open at this point. You know, we do have a couple of pretty good blue cards, but... We got a lot of green there late. Ooh, so we have one of the big score cards, and I think he's pretty good. Um, you know, it does give your opponent treasure, but you get to use the treasure first, and you can also choose not to give them treasure. You don't get it either, obviously, but it's like a super aggressive two drop. It's probably going to end up being our pick here. I mean, I like Buried in the Garden, but right now we're, we don't have any fixing. Irascible Wolverine is really good, I think, you know, as far as commons go. Pyromancers is a card I'm interested to try. These green cards are, are good. You know, well, they're, they're definitely cards that make the cut with regularity, but I think we just take the Plunderer. Two mana, two, two menace. Can do some treasure stuff. Seems seems pretty good to me. This does not. You know, it's a really cool card for Commander, but there's, like, nothing you can do with it in this format. Sometimes I wonder why they do that when they print, like, Commander sets. You know what I mean? Like, the Commander precons exist. Just put this in one of them. Don't stick it in the limited set. But anyway. All right, so I think we're probably... Yeah, I think we're probably in on the Paladin here. Just a, such an efficient big creature. I think Getaway Glamour and Journey to Nowhere are great, but, you know, and are better than the Paladin. But we're deep enough into this thing that I think we take the green card here. The good green card. This makes me wish a little bit that I'd stayed in red-white because it's pretty good. Luckily, it's not, like, busted, so I don't feel terrible about not having it. And the bad news is you kind of need... Like, I could take it and try to play it, but... You kind of need to play it early to get maximum value, and I don't see that happening. Although, there's not really anything in this pack for us. I might just take... No, that doesn't help at all. Maybe I do take it, because this pack is not good for us. I mean, Trick Shot's okay, but I think the upside of taking Ty Joaquin is probably higher. So we'll go ahead and do that, and maybe we pick up some random fixing. I mean, green does have a lot of fixing, but like I said... Two drops are generally things you'd like to play early. Like, you need to play this before you play your removal, basically. Oh, man. Well, I was just complaining. I was like, well, at least it's not a bomb. But then we get Outlaw's Merriment. 
which makes me wish I'd been in red white <laughs> even more. <laughs> uh, it's really powerful. Don't think we can swing it though, unfortunately. We probably just take the bandit. It fixes, it's a good two drop. Uh, occasionally it'll produce more mana. We do have a land here that could help us, but so does Hard Bristle Bandit, you know? And um, I think it's better, you know, it'll power out some stuff. All right, Generous Griff is a, is a nice signpost in common. Um, do I want a Giant Beaver? Probably. Highway Robbery is okay, but I think the Beaver seems pretty good. Curve is looking all right. So yeah, I think we'll take a big, big boy here. Seems unlikely we play this, but like I said, we didn't really give up much. We gave up a trick shot, basically, um, which I'm okay with. Yeah, right now we're not great with Bristle Pack Sentry. Um, Mine Raider has gotten progressively better as we've gotten more and more outlaws. Really wish they'd have an outlaw counter here, but they don't. However, so you know, I have to add it up myself. We have a mercenary, we have rogues. So we're at, yeah, we're at four. Yeah, yep. We are at four, which is, you know, definitely enough for Mine Raider. Ooh, Prickly Pear is pretty good. So is Explosive Derailment. Um, it's a tough pick here. I want them both. We do already have a lot of removal. And I think I'd like, you know, mercenaries open up a lot of possibilities. Going wide is always nice, too. I think we take Prickly Pear over Derailment here. I think um, if I had, like, no removal or just a little bit of removal or, or pack one, pick one, I'd probably pick, take Derailment. But given what our deck looks like, I think we take Prickly Pear there. Double Giant Beaver, but I think we take a Snakeskin Veil. You know, it's just such a good trick. Wins combat, blanks removal. It's just... And it does it so efficiently. Um, it's definitely where we want to go. Okay, so Dance of the Tumbleweeds is an interesting one. It does fix for us, and then in the late game, it can make a body. Iron Fist Pulverizer's okay top curve, and we do have a few cards that, you know, with a plot that can help trigger it. I don't have much of a need for fixing, and I'm not doing desert things. I probably just take the Pulverizer here. Okay, another Snakeskin Veil... It's probably where I go. Like, if I had picked up Fixing Buried in the Garden would be tempting, but I think just grabbing the Veils is good. Pyromancer, I think, is more for blue-red. It would work okay in our deck, and the Naturalist isn't bad either, but I like Snakeskin Veil too much to, to pass it. All right, so... Bunch of cards nobody wants. Card that might make the cut for us. I don't think we want a Gardener. Again, we don't really have... I mean, it's possible, I guess, we pick up something that we want the fixing for yeah all right let's take the fixing then poor peerless rope master eh, these are these are playable cards i don't know we, we don't really need more tricks snakeskin veils largely just better than quick draw you know but uh stoic sphinx is a strong one um has hex proof a lot of the time we're probably going with aloe alchemist great two drop with plot um, another Thunder Salvo I wouldn't hate. Wouldn't hate, you know, most of the deserts, I think every desert that's not Sandstorm Verge in this format is one you can feel solid about playing. This one, don't play. <laughs> you know, the fact that it hurts your mana is the big difference. The others all help your mana or accelerate your mana, uh, filter your mana, you know, and, and so you don't pay as much of a cost for playing them. Sandstorm Verge just has a weak effect, even in a format with Crimes. But yeah, we take Alab Alchemist. I think it's one of the best uncommons in the set. Two mana for plus six, plus four, and trample worth of stats is pretty nuts. Oh, hey, we get our signpost here, one of them. Um, do I think it's better? Yeah. I mean, the desert's tempting, but it's hard not to take the signpost here. I don't think Reach for the Sky is great. Uh, you know, it has, it's going to blow out some games for sure, but it's too expensive to be a great trick. Cactarantula, you know, if we had some deserts, like, like you know, backwoods and maybe, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just take Jolene. Okay. Well, this pack has lots of things. Um, Spinewood Armadillo, I think, is really good. It gives us fixing for what that's worth, and it's just, like, a great card to play late. 
Uh, I do like Rockus Entertainer, but I think we probably grab an Armadillo. Yeah, I think it's better than the Paladin. It's probably better in like Black Green where you can reanimate it or whatever, but I think we just take it here. I do like Riku. Um, I do have Fixing that I could try to pull it off, but like, you know, Jolene makes treasure and stuff, but we don't have enough modal things to really make it work. You need modal things to make it work. I guess armadillos have their own sound effect now in Arena, huh? Ooh, another Cunning Coyote. Yes, please. I think it's probably, you know, this pack has, has a bunch of cards I'd like, although I think we may end up cutting the Sentry, given what our deck has looked like. Like, we're not that good at buffing it. And the Bandit's good, but, you know, I think Coyote's probably just better. Like, yeah, we're probably not going to end up playing this. I guess Aloe Alchemist can buff it. We could use a trick in an ugly way to make it work. Prickly Pears Mercenary, Raucous Entertainer, Clear Shot. Okay, the list is longer than I thought it was of things that can... Uh, it can it can crew or saddle Giant Beaver and then get big enough. It might make the cut, I guess, the more I look at our deck. Cutting Coyote too, huh? Yeah, all right. It probably makes the cut. We don't have that many ways to buff it permanently, but we have enough ways to get it in there that I think we probably... We probably leave it in. Probably end up cutting some top curve stuff. Ooh. So we have another signpost. But then we've got Throw from the Saddle and Primal Might. I think Primal Might's too good. Um, you know, it's like a great fight effect that buffs your creature as much as you want, as much mana as you have. Jolene's good, but, you know, she's not like an insane signpost. Largely because she's only got two toughness. <laughs> so I think you got to take Primal Might over Jolene as much as I'd like more Jolene. Okay, so Prickly Pear or another Beaver? Probably Prickly Pear, I think. Deck seems pretty good, you know. Um, I'm reasonably happy with the power level. I mean, there's some cards that are gonna get cut. Like, I don't love the Commando that much. But, uh, so here's a Demonic Ruckus, also a Trash the Town, which is like, kind of expensive to unlock the full mode, but man, is it is it powerful when you do um because you can buff your creature give it trample and draw a bunch of cards we do already have tricks and, and there's also a desert here which is nice but i think trash the town's good enough i do like ruckus and mine raider that pack just had too much stuff in it all right well we'll take another aloe alchemist very happily our two drop slots looking pretty good with the two cunning, cunning coyotes and two aloe alchemists not to mention generous plunderer you know so that's looking pretty nice. So I'm probably not playing another Thunder Salvo, and I'm probably not playing Reach for the Sky, but I guess I'll grab a Salvo. Yeah. Um, there's a chance we play this. I kind of don't think we have enough outlaws, and we're probably not good enough at going wide, but I don't think these are making the cut at all. So mm. we've also got another raucous entertainer, which I think we take. Drover Grizzly does have the four power this deck loves, but like, I think the power on raucous entertainer is enough that we just take it there. Wow, that's a real late throw from the saddle. So we've got a lot of removal. I may just end up cutting Thunder Salvo. Heck, I may end up cutting Scorching Shot. <laughs> as crazy as that is, like, the double red on it, you know, is a thing. All right, so time to pare this thing down. So I don't think... I don't know. We have a lot of ways to buff the sentry, but I feel like all our other two drops are just better. Probably do cut the salvo. I mean, we just have a bunch of, you know, fight effects and stuff. So, and, and we have plot, so this is going to do three sometimes, but probably not often enough. I guess it is like our cheapest removal spell, which has some value. Um, yeah. Quill Charger's not great. It's probably getting axed. I think Pulverizer too, probably. Um, yeah, I think we probably cut Salvo. It is, our, like I said, our cheapest removal, but 
I think in the early game, we're just going to have bigger creatures than most people, uh, faster and bigger creatures than most people, and we're not going to want to start removing stuff until a little later anyway with our clear shots and primal mites. Throw from the saddle, I think, is probably better in this deck, too. We don't have a ton of mounts. I think we might only have one. So maybe Thunder Salvo is better. We do have really good mana for a two-color deck. I mean, that doesn't hurt. I could consider going down to 16. I don't think that would be completely insane between our Armadillo and our cards that can make treasure and our relatively low curve. Like, we don't have any card that's going to end up stuck in our hand entirely because we can uh, always cycle that. So I think we probably do go down to 8-8. Eight, eight. The question is, do I need to worry about my mana with Scorching Shot more than I need to think about Thunder Salvo? Probably not. Yeah, I think throw from the saddle just seems like it's going to be good here. It is a sorcery. I sort of forgot about that, but yeah. I think I'd rather cut a salvo. I want to try trash the town. I think it's going to end up working reasonably well in this deck. Um, let's see. Three rogues, three mercenaries, and then we have some tokens. So yeah, I think mine raider's probably good here. And our last cut is going to be, what is it going to be? I don't know. Um, I do kind of keep coming back to the sentry. I have ways to buff it. That has been established. But, like, is it enough? I think we leave Scorching Shot in because, yeah, getting to the double red is a little tricky, but it's good all game long. So... What's our weakest what's our weakest link here? Maybe it's just Mine Raider. I like having a pile of two drops and some snakeskin veils and fight spells. Um, and the Mine Raider's okay, but it doesn't have four power. We don't need the treasure that much. It might just be our weakest link. It probably is. It is a little annoying. I need to run eight mountains because of Scorching Shot, though, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Um, because we don't have that many red cards, but I think we're probably supposed to do it still. Yeah. All right. Okay. Looks pretty good. Do have the awkward opening hand scorching shot that we probably won't have mana for for a while, but we also got two drop, three drop, clear shot. Um, so don't hate that. Well, look at that. We've got the mana we wanted. It does stink a little that, you know, getting these both in play and then putting counters on both of them is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but So if I draw another three, that's what I'm going to play, obviously. Hmm. What if I should just clear shot that thing? Spend this turn clear shotting, next turn play Prickly Pear, and put two, um, put a counter on both of them? It does seem pretty good. Seems pretty good. It's not the best in terms of like mana equity, but I think it'll work out okay. Why aren't ranks showing? Am I playing in the wrong? <laughs> I don't think I'm in Premier, if that's showing. Yeah, so we just play Prickly Pear here. Then we do this. Yeah, I must not have gone in Premier Draft. Definitely didn't go in Quick Draft, though. That draft took way too long to have accidentally gone into Quick Draft. I don't think they even have Quick Draft. Double unscrupulous contractor. Are they going to sack one? No. Um, hmm. I don't love using Scorching Shot here, to be honest. Should 
Sure have drawn a lot of lands for only having 16 of them. Um... I could send all three in there, but man... Losing Raucous Entertainer and Prickly Pear, being left with a 2-2 and two lands and a removal spell in my hand... Doesn't sound awesome. <laughs> doesn't sound awesome. I think we hold on to the Entertainer and send in the other two, though. Because the Entertainer just has so much upside. They'll make every creature we play the rest of this game better, you know. So it's hard for me not to not to want to hold on to it. It's just too bad we don't also have a creature we can play this turn or something. Because then that would be that would be a really nice turn, really. Looks like they're going to kill one of them. Yeah, Skulldug. Ooh, no. Okay. That's less than ideal. Um, luckily... One of them dies, but the other one does not. Yeah, we take three. Skullduggery is sweet. It's a super good format for it, too. Yeah, that's bad. So, we are suddenly out of gas. It doesn't look like they have a ton... But <laughs> our 16 land deck continues to deliver. We're, we have half of our lands so far. <laughs> That's when you want to draw trash to town. All right, so I think we kill Vile Smasher here. They might have the card. No, they don't. I was going to say, they might have the card that can save it. Hmm. I guess I can use this on their creature. Until no turn, target creature gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player. Draw two cards. No, because the text is added to their creature. So it's I'm not I can do it, but I'm not the one who's going to draw two. So I don't think that's what we want to do. It's not like a separate effect that's like floating in the ether. It gets added to the creature. Oof. Well, the good news is our opponent is also not doing that much to, like, take advantage of the fact that we've drawn nine lands. Um, and if we ever draw a creature, like, Trash the Town's going to do some work. You know, of course, they have a creature first, and it's a very scary one at that. One that'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't win a game of Magic, you know? And that's where we are. If you draw 10 of 16 lands, your top 15 cards, you don't have a great chance. Yeah, so they're going to attack me to 3 here, and then they can just drain life me the rest of the way. So I think we're dead, more or less. I can't imagine we're not. They may commit a crime here. Let's see if we draw one more land to close out our game. <laughs> we don't. Interesting. The coyote's kind of interesting because of Trash the Town. And we have so much mana. I think for us to have any hope at all, we have to hit them with this, draw two cards, and hope we draw more action. Even then, we're probably dead because Rakish Crew's in play. But I think that gives us our best chance for sure. <laughs> They're like, what? Yeah. So we only want to use the card draw mode. They might just have removal here, which would be hilarious after how our game has gone. And yeah, I think they do. We were dead either way. So obviously we still did the thing we were supposed to do. But uh, yeah, I mean, we had no we had no chance in that game. We started out reasonably well. Um... But then after we made trades, we just couldn't draw anything, and they did. You know, that's that's how it's going to go. That is how it'll go sometimes.
All right. Okay. I think this hand's acceptable. Snakeskin Veil, another card that gets Bristle Pack going, incidentally. Wonder which two I'm supposed to play here. I mean, if I'm allowed to keep Hard Bristle Banded in play, I'll be able to plot this next turn, which is pretty gross. Um, yeah, I think it's worth the upside. Good chance it just dies to removal, but if it doesn't, like, things are going to start going pretty well for us, I think. So they just plotted an Outcaster Trailblazer, which is pretty gross. Ooh. Hmm. Allo Alchemist is interesting here, because I could... Well, then this would have to be tapped. Never mind. Never mind. I think we're probably supposed to play our Paladin here. I could play, like, a, a creature instead, like, and leave up Snakeskin Veil or something cute like that, but I think we just want to play this for free next turn. Okay, makes me wish I'd been a little more aggressive. Since they're trying to make a bunch of mana. I hope, like, five-color deserts are a thing. Oh, hey, this will work out pretty well. Um, yeah, I think that's what we're supposed to do. And then we can even leave up Snakeskin Veil. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to cast this normally. Well, now I think we just play Bristle Pack Sentry 2 and uh, hope they don't kill one of these. Seems like the plan. Yeah. They have a bunch of mana. Hopefully I can kill whatever they want to play or run them over before they can use it. Our board... You know, that was all one turn. We played all three of those in one turn. That's what plot can allow for is um, kind of insane turns like that. So they get mana out of their plot creature here. So they may play something completely absurd. Okay, well, it's not that bad. They do get to draw a card when I kill it, and they draw a card now. So, like, in terms of card advantage, I guess it's not ideal. Yeah, all right. That was all really bad for us. That was all real bad. Um, what am I supposed to do here? So, I think we plot Aloe Alchemist and buff our sentry. Oh, or I click on the wrong thing. <laughs> Early on in the format, that's, uh, that's what can happen. Um, do I kill Cac Tarantula here? Meant to plot that, then I was gonna buff this, so that would have gone far, far better, obviously. Okay. Now that I screwed that up, what do we wanna do? <laughs> I think we attack with our paladin, and that's it, probably. Yeah, and then I think we kinda have to kill Outcaster Trailblazer, because they're just drawing too many cards. Uh, yeah, I can't do anything with that mana, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, they may have already drawn so many cards that we're in trouble here. Man, casting that Allo Alchemist is brutal. In most ways, I think playing on Arena is better in terms of not screwing things up, but when it comes to, like, you know, in person, you just have to say the right thing. <laughs> like, you know, I wouldn't have made that mistake in person because I said what I wanted to do, but uh, then it didn't go that way, so. Because I managed to screw it up. Yeah, they can kill my Hard Bristle Bandit by sacking a treasure if they really want to. Which is annoying, but... Especially because at this point, I'd kind of like that last mana to stick around. We'll take six here. Oh, 
Our own Jolene, huh? Okay. Well, that seems pretty good. Let's attack with our paladin. See what they do here. I could use snakeskin veil to save things. Oh yeah, and we definitely do because they can't just block with one of these to kill it once it's a six five. So yeah. That worked out pretty well for us, despite our earlier mistakes. Okay, so they go to nine. I like that. Um, all right. End our turn. Man, imagine if I'd actually done... They'd be a lot less life if I had buffed this and attacked with both of them that turn. This next turn, especially if they attack with Cac Tarantula again, I can just swing with everything except our sentry, of course. Yeah. And for that reason, I think we go ahead and block Jolene. Do we just take 10? Probably not. I could use my Jolene to block their Jolene. Nah. I think we take 10. There are a few cards that could kill us out of nowhere here, but they have to have that card. Plus, like... I mean, I guess Trash the Town would be pretty bad news here, huh? Let's go ahead and also trump Cac Tarantula. I don't need this mana anymore, and they can kill it with their uh, thing anyway. So getting rid of the two things that don't attack that well seems like it makes the most sense. But yeah, we probably win this game if I uh, hadn't made I mean, we might still, but I think we would have basically won it if I'd, uh, ooh. Well, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be, but it's not good. So, <laughs> they kill both of these, then they swing at us again if they want to. They kind of can't, I guess. I can gain three life at instant speed if I have to. So they get another combat phase here. What do they do with it? They swing with everything. Okay. Well. That is 17 damage. Obviously, I've got to block something. So, I think we block like that. I think Trample is probably more valuable than three power, and four power is probably more valuable than three. And yeah, we can cycle this at instant speed if we have to, to not die here. And then we can swing back for lethal, theoretically. See what happens. So, they might just try to sack treasure to kill us. That would be... That would be good news for us, because we can gain three. have to kill us now. I guess playing a body might allow them to win. Okay. 
So we go to one. Yep, that means we win. <laughs> We're gonna gain life at instant speed. We win this one despite my silly mistake. Which is good. Always hurts worse to make mistakes when they make you lose, you know? <laughs> Final Legacy. The cool Rakdos thing. Okay, one drop, two drop, three drop, got trashed to town. Works for me. Ankle biter is nice with our fight effects because it can kill anything. Actually, they're bite effects because they don't print fight effects very often anymore because they're so much worse. The difference being that a bite effect is your creature. Your creature is the only one doing damage. And a fight effect is, uh, hmm. Do I just want to kill that? I kind of think maybe I do. Because if it lets them ramp into more mounts and stuff, like a like they play a five mana mount here, that's pretty hard to come back from. Yeah, we'll go ahead and kill that, I think. I mean, I guess, I guess I could just kill it with our ankle biter in the end. Yeah. Mm hmm. And by it, I mean kill the thing that they play. Playing the bandit does set up like a potential bigger turn in the future involving like our entertainer and stuff. Got a lot of options here. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and kill it. It's nice that they added a reach um, animation because it's been like, you know, people attack into things with reach all the time, accidentally. Well, there's clear shot, so the world really wants us to be able to take advantage of our uh, our ankle biter. Um, so I could just trash the town here if they block. And if they don't block, I play Jolene. I mean, that seems fine to me. Aired Archway is pretty sweet. Um, bounce lands. I mean, it's not as good as the OG bounce lands that had uh, could produce mana of two different colors, but it's pretty good. They have enough mana up now that I don't love attacking with Ankle Biter, but honestly, it's not that bad if it's just a straight up trade either. Like, I'm probably not going to try to use a trick here is what I'm saying. Like, if they block Ankle Biter here, it's whatever. And if they block and try to use a trick and we blow them out with clear shot or trash the town, then right. So I don't think we try to do anything here. It most likely means they've got something, you know, right now. So we'll just let the trade happen. And then I think we play out our entertainer and our bandit. So now they've got five mana with only four lands. That's why these are sort of like card advantage. I mean, it's not like exactly. That doesn't hurt my feelings that much. Although if we manage to do it again where we don't draw any creatures to abuse with Rockus Entertainer after playing it, I'm gonna be pretty sad. Um, hmm. They still have two mana up, which concerns me a little bit in terms of trash the town. 
But... Do I just want to draw a bunch of cards? I don't think we have to do it, so I don't think I'm gonna do it. If that makes sense. I think we'll just hit him for three and pass. We have removal up. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say they're probably going to plot something off of that. Oh, hello. Ugh. That is not what I wanted to see. So we know they can't interact here is the good news. Um, I sort of feel like I need to hold on to clear shot to deal with this. I mean, they're probably going to make a huge creature too, which is really bad news for us. See, I don't think we want to do... Okay, well, that's... It does give us a huge creature with ward. And I can also put another counter on it. That's probably what I do now. I was thinking I might use Trash the Town here, Run Over Doc Arlock, although maybe I should. Maybe things are about to get way too out of control and I can always play the Armadillo later. Yeah, they'd have to actually block for me to do it anyway and they might not block. I don't get a counter on this, but it's probably okay. So we'll attack. Yeah, we'll just do two. Then we'll play the armadillo. And hopefully just run them over with Trash the Town here. I mean, they're going to play a 5-5 five, five and some creature that's twice the size it normally is. But hopefully I can get one or both of them out of the way. Oh my god. These are both on my top 10 bombs list, so that's fun. The good news is... Oh, what are they doing? Okay, so playing the heist doesn't worry me nearly as much as the other ones do. Probably got to kill... Oh, man. I probably have to kill a Brawler before I kill a Tumblewag. Okay. I can do it all at instant speed, which is interesting in terms of trample and all that, but... Yeah. Um... Yeah, so let's clear shot here. I guess we're going to go ahead and add mana. Except I'm not going to use Trash the Town at the right time. Well, I guess it's basically free mana. Yeah, so it does matter a little bit. Because then I go clear shot. Hit Railway Brawler with it. Untap. So they have seven toughness over there. If they don't block correctly, they're just dead. Like, outright. Okay. Well. Let's just swing with everything. That's, that makes it way more likely they don't block correctly than anything else. Do I need this mana? I have five mana. No, I don't need it because I have five without it. So, yeah. Swing of all three. There's lots of bad blocks for them to make here. Okay. So that's it, we win, obviously. Um, okay. So, if I trash the town here, this becomes 10 tramples. Yeah, so that's what we do. We use Trash the Town on this. It's also less likely they can kill it because of Ward. It's actually basically impossible. They could kill this, in which case we only trample over for seven. 
That would be kind of bad, I guess. But I feel, still think it's what we're supposed to do here. Nice. <laughs> well, that's kind of what Trash the Town can do. Just found us lethal. I actually sort of didn't realize till just now that you could actually divide the trample, which makes it even better. Because, like, I could have just given trample to my big armadillo and then given the boost to something else, which can be, like, even more of a blowout. Okay, so kind of have to stick a creature for this hand to do what it needs to do, but... That's not impossible or anything. What's weird is we haven't had a turn two coyote yet. Like, what's that about? <laughs> yeah, that's annoying. This thing is a very nice defensive creature that can also go on offense when you need it to and draw you cards. Like, if they plot here and loot, which is pretty likely, it's pretty likely that's what their turn's gonna be. Um, it's a pretty good turn. Oh, it's a little better when they don't cast anything, for sure. Um, but yeah, it is so big, too, that none of our things really put a dent in it, which kind of stinks. All right, well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, we want to play a forest so we can leave up Snakeskin Veil. Vale. Although, I'm probably just going to use the ability anyway. Let's see if they counter this thing. Good chance they do. It's not too sad if they do. Yeah, that's fine. We will end our turn. Hmm. We've got one blue mana up. I could use Primal Might here to kill the crab and swing for a bunch. The question is whether I'm concerned, also concerned about Hard Bristle Bandit. I mean, I don't love the mana. And Canyon Crab, as good as it is, is, like, not threatening us in a big way. I'm killing one of these things, obviously, but trying to decide how I want to do it. Sort of feels like I'm supposed to kill the crab, huh? Eh. Mm. I'm just going to go ahead and kill the bandit, actually. Then I'm going to attack because they might just let us in for three free damage here. Damn, they don't. That's okay, though. This lets me hold on to Primal Might for something I'm more concerned about. Yeah, that looting is helping them find uh, mana, theoretically. Now they have too much mana up for us to really try to Primal Might, although we do have our Snakeskin Veil, so it's not the worst idea ever. So they discarded a Decisive Denial. That means our hand almost assuredly has interaction in it. But... God. Uh, so many lands. Um, so this is actually a straight-up fight card, which is worth remembering. I think we try to fight this... And if they try to interact, we use our Veil. I mean, after that, we're going to have to pray we draw. Maybe that, if I do that, then I have to pray I draw some action the rest of the way. I'm just going to have a 3-3 sitting around. If I can get them to burn a removal spell and then Snakeskin Veil, though, like, that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess we're going to do it. Hopefully we draw well the rest of the way. I mean, I think that's true no matter what. 
Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, there we go. Always have a backup plan, they say. I have one of those. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> that doesn't solve that problem. I don't mind it too much, though, honestly. It's just a one for one. We still have snakeskin veil up. I was thinking they were going to try to bounce my creature or something or use removal. Then we would have been in better shape, but, you know, this is okay. That's less okay. Okay, so we do have our veil. Oh, we don't even need our veil because we can just go bristle pack sentry, put a counter on it, end our turn. Them countering our Primal Might that turn would have hurt a lot more if we actually had something else we could do. Luckily we didn't, <laughs> in a weird way. I probably wouldn't have done it if I had something else I could do, so... Makes sense. They've got one blue mana, huh? I think that probably means I block and use Veil to kill Giant Beaver and keep our Bristle Pack alive. Okay. Well, we'll swing with Bristle Pack here. And we'll play Ankle Biter, put a counter on it. I think I trade it for, I mean, if the crab attacks me, I definitely block it because I have to spend mana just to make it kill my ankle biter. So, yeah. Okay. Wouldn't hate finding our armadillo. Okay. Who do I want to kill? It might just be Doc Arlock, honestly, because he can enable some shenanigans and everything else that's going on on the board, I feel like I can cope with. But if something really big comes down, not so much. So it's, it also still enables a good bristle pack attack here. So yeah, let's go ahead and kill Doc Arlock. And then you know what? I think we just attack with both of these. Sure, they can swing back, but like, this is way more damage, so. <laughs> if they want to block Ankle Biter, trade one for one, I'm cool with it. Also cool if they want to take seven. Also cool if they want to take seven, like I said. I'm holding on to this mostly to bluff. I mean, we've had a bunch of interaction that has been... Well, maybe not a bunch. I guess Snakeskin Veil is the only thing we've done so far. Yeah, that's not great. All right, so they're going to hit us for five here, probably, anyway. All right, uh... I think you just play these, you know, once you reach this part of the game. Do I offer up the ankle biter trade here again? I probably do. I think we do. Especially because we're going to play this as a 6-5 effectively. I might have counter magic, I guess, but that's okay if they do. Yeah, so they can pay two here, which they kind of have to if they want to kill our creature. Now we know they don't have counter magic, and we still trade one for one. So it works for me. 
Then we play Paladin. Put a counter on it. All right, so this can be pretty scary. Um, that's pretty good, but it's not, it's not that great. All right, so we hit for six here. Would have been nice to draw another creature, but hey, we'll drop them to five. The reason it would have been nice to draw another creature is that they're about to have another four, four, most likely. Might even be bigger. But yeah, that's pretty good when you can survive, and they do. You know, we didn't draw, we don't have enough pressure on them. Because you, you don't impact the board, but then on your next turn, you could just do a whole bunch. Although if they hit two lands plus that, it's not really a whole bunch, okay. So I probably have to stop attacking. That's a pretty good draw. I mean, an attack here does force a double block. I can only kill one of them, though. Um, this is going to come down as a 5-5. Five, five. So I sort of feel like it makes more sense for us to build out our board and look for a way to punch lethal through later. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Pass our turn. Because once they play this as a 5-5, five, five, after I've given up my 6-5, like, it's pretty hard to have things work out for us. Yeah, they're doing a whole lot. Wait, what is this? Why aren't you showing it to me? Oh, it's a flyer. That That's kind of a problem. Well... I think we pass. I think if the beaver attacks us here, we'd probably block with... Ooh, double flyers out of nowhere. Yeah, that's not great. Especially when we continue to draw <laughs> as if we have, like, 30 lands in our deck. Goodness. So they can hit us for eight a turn now. Don't love it. Haven't seen you yet, huh? Doesn't really do anything here, unfortunately. Might help us do, you know, a little more damage on like a last turn swing or something, but this pretty much means we're dead. They only hit us for f four here, okay. They're wanting to make sure they don't die. I think we just give them the treasure at this point. Let's just do one more damage after all. Ooh. Well, that is interesting. Because I'll get another treasure. This will do one just by swinging. That'll drop them. So I have two direct damage on the board. Is that enough? Is that enough to find a way for lethal? I don't think it is, unfortunately. But I'm also dead, so I think we go for the swing and hope it works. I guess I could... No, I've only got two treasure, so it's not even like I can kill one of the gins. Yeah. All right, so let's just swing with everything. See if we can uh, chip in for four damage here. If I use this to buff something else, is that any better? I don't think so. We do have the, uh, the Menace... So that, that does make things interesting. Menace and Trample here make things kind of interesting. Oh. That means we have... That's lethal if you take that and don't have anything else. So I'm down with it. 
I guess we're gonna kill this. Is anything else happening? Nope. Wow. We kind of got there out of nowhere. <laughs> like, drawing Jolene there. Drawing the uh, Plunderer and then Jolene was actually, like, pretty ideal. Like, you know, finding a way to find... I was saying I needed to find a way to do lethal. Wasn't really thinking about them. I was thinking about, like, our trample trick or something, but uh, obviously that worked. I wonder if they had a way they could block and not die there. I didn't really do the math because it didn't matter. Like, we had to swing. Um, <laughs> but, ooh, that's a mulligan. Haven't had to do that yet, have we? But, yeah, all mountains and green cards. No, thank you. Oh, this one's, man. This one's so good that I don't really want to give up any of it. Am I supposed to give up a land? Probably. I can play everything with two. So, yeah, we'll give up a land and hold on to the spells. Do they hit anything? A plane's not too surprising. Okay. Yeah, I think we just play our bristle pack sentry and pass here. So they're leaving up all their mana, huh? Can't say I love that. I think that means I want to plot here and then play Jolene next turn to draw the card off of this. Let's go to combat first, I guess. No harm in, in doing that. Yeah, so let's... Uh, let's plot when they have blue mana up. And then in our turn... So they've still got blue mana up. That's interesting. Huh. All right, so now I think the plan is to plot Aloe Alchemist and buff this. See what happens. Um, I think there's a decent chance they kill or bounce this. Um, but if they don't, we have like a massive turn. And if they do, we still have an okay turn, you know? So, yeah. I still think we play out our Outcaster here, because I think we need to add a 3-3 to the board. Um, you know, it'd be nice to try and wait until we can do something fancier, but... Um, we go ahead and add the 3-3 to the board still. Okay, so let's attack with our Outcaster. Um. Okay, do I want to replay? I feel like leaving up Snakeskin Veil has a ton of value against this person. So I think we play out our Alchemist. And then our sentry and pass. Okay. Is snakeskin veil just like worth it here? That's the question. <laughs> I think the answer is probably no. Okay, so I think we use Primal Might to kill Daring Thunder Thief here. And if they try to kill the thing we use Primal Might on, we use Snakeskin Veil. So, yeah.
Um, I guess we'll do x equals 3, just to be safe. Oh, x equals 2. Yeah, then we leave up our veil. Uh, the trampler is an interesting option. Although sending this in when it can't otherwise might just be better. It's also big enough to kill both of these. So is the outcaster, but yeah, let's do this. All right, I forgot it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not the kind of effect I thought it was. So, I don't really think we attack now. I think we just spend our turn killing that, and that's okay. Certainly not exciting. Not as exciting as I wanted it to be, but... Okay. Well... Play Jolene, attack with all three. Doesn't seem too bad. I guess I don't have trash that... Oh, yeah, I will, because Jolene will make a treasure. No, she won't, because we won't be attacking with a four. Well, do I just attack with the Outcaster? Try to trash the town and leave up Snakeskin Vale. That seems okay. Okay, so we're looking at four damage. Um, I don't have to kill both. So, yeah, I think that means we use Trash the Town. Just the counter mode? Yeah, just the counter mode. And if they try to bounce or whatever, we have our Veil. If they have two ways to interact, oh my god. <laughs> that is such a beating. Oh, no. Not only do we get blown out now by the counter magic, they get, a, they get some mana. So I could use my Veil here just to kill Inventive Wingsmith, but I don't think that's what we're supposed to do. We just have to let that die. Feel the pain of the two for one. You only get one mana at least, but it's still a really good turn for them. I keep expecting like normal interaction and not counter magic. That's been, uh, that's happened to us twice now. Foolishly. Okay, so I guess that's that's a good a use as any of Snakeskin Veil. Vale. Knowing them, they probably have even more interaction. No, they don't. Okay. I like that. Don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're still not, like, destroying us. Although, this is pretty good equipment when you hit a 4-2, I guess. We could draw, if we draw really well, we could get out of this, but, you know, it's got to be pretty darn well. You know, not drawing lands, for example.
The gross thing is they can make anything into a 4-2 now. You know? I don't think it'll have lifelink, though, the way it's worded. Nope. Hey, look, a cunning coyote. Didn't exactly show up at the right time. Um... Yeah, so let's play it, I guess. <laughs> hmm. So they can sack a treasure to kill something. Oh, no, they don't have red mana, so they can't. This doesn't say... You can play the activated abilities, no. So, yeah, let's just buff the ankle biter then. I think the only way we win this game is if we, like, draw amazingly and do a bunch of damage to them, basically. Like, I think I just have to give up the fact that I'm going to take damage from them and hope we can just keep finding haste and stuff. I don't think I have a main... I don't think I have a way to blow up the Aegis... Unfortunately. Ooh. I can at least kill the flyer, though. Let's go to combat. Okay. They swing back for six after I hit them for, like, four here. Drop them to nine. I think, am I supposed to just kill the bigger creature? The only problem is they can move this and make, it will have flying because it's a counter. Yeah, I didn't think about that. They do have red mana now. I'm glad I didn't... Well, actually, using clear shot here is still pretty good. Because it'll save my ankle biter. So yeah, I think we kill the flyer. Okay. Yeah. That Aegis is destroying us, and our own Jolene is not being very nice. Unfortunately, this one's a sorcery. So, we target our ankle biter here. They can't hold on to the tap ability and Jolene, so maybe just killing Jolene is what I'm supposed to do here. Even though they can just make this into Jolene. I mean, getting the blocker out of the way gets us real close to lethal, but it's not lethal, and then they can attack, make a treasure, and kill us. So, I think it makes more sense to kill Jolene. So, at the end of, that, at the end of my turn, or now, they can tap something, yeah. Then they can make treasure after they equip her. So... I think we're only really able to attack for two here. Sort of means I should have buffed my coyote so I could get in for three, huh? Yeah. 
Ooh, no. This is better to attack with because I'll just be able to kill it with treasure after they attack. Yeah, all right. Oh my god. <laughs> they have two assimilation aegises? It's a mythic rare. What's that about? Game over is what it's about. <laughs> they can only, you know, there's only so much they can do, but now we're dead because they attack, sack the treasure, and do one. Yeah. I think we did the right thing, like, by attacking. Like, we could have not attacked with anything and tried to win that way, but it wasn't likely to work out, especially with a second assimilation aegis. Surely they... Yeah, there they go. Well... It's tough to beat two Oblivion Rings that upgrade your creatures, you know what I mean? Okay, we do have a Cunning Coyote in our opening hand, but we also have no green mana and four other green cards. I think we probably have to mulligan. I mean, it's borderline, but man... If we draw more green cards or mountains, we're pretty much dead, and those are two fairly likely outcomes, so... All right, this is better. Might have to play a turn two alchemist the normal way, which is weird, but I'm probably supposed to send back trash the town. It's just not gonna do anything for too long. And I kind of need three mana. So, yeah. Just playing this as a two mana, three, two trample looks like the, what's gonna go down? Eh, never mind. Now it's something else to do on two, so I think we do it. Hmm. This thing has caused me some problems already. Makes me want to use Scorching Shot on it. <laughs> I think I probably do. Um, hmm, interesting. So, let's see. We can tap this for red. Use Scorching Shot. It untaps. And then I can either do the Prickly Pair or the Al Alchemist. Alchemist Swing for four seems pretty good, I think. Well, I'll have more choices of things to buff, though. Yeah, let's play Prickly Pair. This is already tapped for more than I kind of expected it to, so... See whether that continues, but. Double snake skin veil, huh? All right, so. Let's. Plot. Look, I did it right that time. Um, yeah, we'll plot and buff this and then swing with both of these. If they want to trade with prickly pear, that's fine. Obviously, we come out ahead in that exchange. I think doing six is perfectly fine too. We have mana up for a snakeskin veil. So, yeah. What we really want them to do here is try to use removal. That's like the dream. They don't have that many good targets for removal, to be honest, so they, they probably won't. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a little bit annoying. So they have two mana left over, Silver Deputy, okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think we buff this and attack with it. If they want to trade Trailblazer, that's fine. I could. No, it wouldn't work. Double Snake Skin Veil wouldn't, wouldn't work. We're okay with that. I mean, that thing could draw them a ton of cards if we're not careful, so. I'm a little surprised they blocked, honestly, but. Looks like they might be casting removal here, which, like I said, would be, that's the dream we want to live. 
with our two snakeskin veils in hand. Yep, it's going to feel pretty good. A little less good because they do get a 1-1 out of the deal, but I also get plus one on my creature, so... I think we probably still come out ahead in the end. Ooh. There'd be some potential blowouts now. Um, okay, so... We're going to buff this. And I think we attack because if they try to, like, double block it, clear shot just destroys them. Okay. They can also do that, I guess. Um, that's a race we're going to win in the long run. I don't think we even really need to use clear shot on anything here. I think we just end our turn. Like, I didn't really factor in that anytime you cast an instant, you basically get a mana back. <laughs> We're going to blink this, too. I feel kind of bad, but you got to do what you got to do, you know? So, yeah, we're just going to snakeskin veil. They, um... Went to all the trouble of casting this, which isn't that easy, and then I just countered it. Which is mean. Okay. Hmm. Could produce a blowout here by blocking with Hard Bristle Bandit, clear shotting, and then killing, like, Oasis Gardener. But I think it makes, makes way more sense to hold on to clear shot until they play something that we just can't attack through, which is not what we're looking at yet. So I think we just take take a bit, bit of damage here. Go ahead and buff the Alchemist again. Drop them to five. Hold up our, continue to hold up our clear shot. If they have yet another removal spell here, it's not gonna be great for us. But hopefully, oh, they do. Yeah, that's annoying. But not the end of the world either. I mean, we have them at low enough life and I'm gonna kill something here. It actually makes more sense to buff our bandit to kill something, though, given what their creatures look like. Yeah, we can get that blowout I was talking about. So yeah, there's not really, there's not really a reason to uh, to do that. All right, so we go block, and we go. Well, might as well tap it, right? Clear shot. Right, so yeah, we go ahead and buff our bandit. So we have a mercenary in place, so this will be able to attack all on its own. Let's hope they brick on their draw here. They do. All right, so. Looking pretty good for us. I mean, if they draw a creature, they're not dead, I guess. Okay. Those snakeskin veils were pretty sweet, as they tend to be. So we've at least got a winning record in our first draft. Let's see if we can push it a little further. Still haven't gotten to play a turn two coyote. <laughs> Or plot a turn two coyote. Depending on your hand, it might actually be better to plot it sometimes. So we don't have red, but we can get it if we need it. And we actually have turn one play, plot Aloe Alchemist on turn two, so buff the biter. Yeah, that's that's a pretty nasty turn. A couple of turns there. Way to start the game. So keep seven. Player ankle biter.
Yeah, so we go, we drew our red anyway, so probably don't even cycle the armadillo. I can't imagine we really want to. Bam, it's like a burn spell. <laughs> Well, they're having a slow start. And we play Alchemist, Entertainer. I could have waited a turn to put a counter on this. You know, you could do stuff like that, but it just seems like it's better to add a bunch of bodies to the board than do anything else. Um, especially when your opponent's kind of defenseless. Well, now they're not. Yeah, Loyal Steed is pretty good scries and then you know anytime they attack with it they can um exile they can blink the the steed and whatever they um uh saddle it with okay well i don't think we do anything unfortunately I can at least kill it, you know, with our ankle biter when the time comes, but yeah, we're kind of out of gas here. They could easily have removal for ankle biter, it should be noted. Um, and if they do, that's pretty bad news. Pretty bad news. Maybe it's confirmation bias, but man, do I feel like I've drawn like six lands in my top 10 like every game. <laughs> Next turn we can at least play our Armadillo. We're not gonna have the mana to also put a counter on it, which is kind of a bummer, but you know. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, it's kind of funny to crew or, you know, saddle uh, the fortune with. But yeah, you can also just attack with your 3-3 lifelinker. They did push this one, you know, this card is almost always bad. Uh, destroy a thing that's been dealt damage, but put lifelink and flying on it and you're like, well, <laughs> I mean, it's good for equipping, good for, good for a lot of things. So I think we, I could hold off on playing the armadillo just so that I can put a counter on it and use Scorching Shot here to kill the Assassin, which it's not a terrible plan, I guess. But they do have a bunch of mana up. There are a couple of tricks that would save it. So it's probably just better to play out our big Armadillo, which it's far less likely they can do something about right away because of Ward and like, you know, it doesn't care if your creature becomes indestructible or comes back to the battlefield with a treasure or any of that stuff. So yeah, we'll just, well, we'll go to combat first. See if that, anything happens. It doesn't. We play our armadillo. Does mean we take another hit from Rooftop Assassin, but I think that's okay. All things considered. Oh, I forgot I had Reach, actually. How about that? <laughs> Ooh. I don't like any of that stuff. I probably have to kill the Key Keeper, because the Key Keeper... Well, they have to spend five to tap my Armadillo, I guess. But if I kill the Key Keeper, they're just, like, not getting through for a while, most likely. There are a few removal spells that might be online. But... Yeah, I think we're just supposed to kill the Key Keeper. Past the turn. Stop playing all these good cards. <laughs> yep. I was a little worried about Kamball draining me life and all that, but I felt like the immediate problem was the key keeper.
Can't imagine they plan on attacking here. Okay. Game is sort of stalled out. And the other times when I've been able to win from this position, my opponent has had less life. It's not really the case now. Yeah, that's not good. If I ever make a counter, they get a counter too. Ooh, this is a good spot for the Hustler. It's pretty bad on turn two, but... In the long game, like, draining me life and all of that is just insane, you know? So... So I don't love that. I think I attack with Bristle Pack Sentry. I mean, they can block and make an indestructible thing. Make this indestructible, but they still have to give up something legit. Even if it's Blood Hustler, so... Yeah, let's just attack with our sentry. We gotta pressure them some, or they're just gonna sit here and drain us with tokens and whatnot. Yeah, so they probably sack their blood hustler, but like I said, kinda worried about that card at this stage of the game, so if that's what they decide to give up, it probably makes more sense to give up their contractor, unfortunately. Oh, or they just decide to trade. That's probably the, is their best option. Yeah, so this will gain a counter and drain us a life every turn. And combined with Prairie Dog, especially, things could get out of hand here. Need to find more removal. That is not removal. <laughs> so do I send in a 5-5? Five five? And get a counter on my Alchemist? I don't hate that. They have to block with something real. Yeah. See what happens here. How do they block this time? Yeah, these two together is kind of messed up. Well, I definitely kill Kambal. If only I had a trick to really punish them. I think we've done a pretty good job of thinning out their board. Um, kind of needed to. Obviously, though, these two together are the real uh, menace. Um, once they have enough mana, they can, like, drain us and get multiple counters on Prairie Dog and Blood Hustler every turn. And Yeah, it's, it's not good. And we bricked on our draw. Which, at this point, this game, you know, it's kind of gone okay. We had several good draws in a row, at least. I can't complain too much. Basically, I just have to wait things out and hope I draw removal. Like, that's our only... That's what our hope is here. Hmm. That's pretty gross, too, when you have a repeat in the late game, when you have a repeatable way to commit crimes. <laughs> I don't like our chances. Okay, we did draw removal. I like that part. I could try to generate a blowout by attacking with, like, Aloe Alchemist here, I guess. It's not the worst plan. They've only got one card in their hand. Yeah, let's attack with Aloe Alchemist, see what happens.
Okay. So what do I kill? Probably Blood Hustler. The Prairie Dog needs to grow for a while to really pressure us, and the Blood Hustler is already doing it. So, yeah, okay. Does this work out for us, or is the one card in their hand interactive? There's a pretty good chance it is, but let's hope it's not. <laughs> kind of feels like it is, otherwise, you know, this would have resolved. <laughs> so, let's see what it is. Um, that does mean my alchemist dies, but I still kill both of their creatures, right? No, because that has a crime. Mm. Yeah, that's, that hurts. So unscrupulous contractor dies, but nothing else does. Not to mention my random death touch creature. Oh no, it is a little better than I thought. It hadn't resolved, the uh, buff hadn't resolved yet. I think we probably still come out behind there, but at least it wasn't as much of a disaster as I briefly believed it to be. Now they can just grow Prairie Dog until it's so big that it can attack through my armadillo. So, um, and a Rictus Robber, yeah. So this will gain a counter here. Actually, the gain, it can gain two counters actually, because it can use the ability. So yeah, it'll be too big in the very near future. Okay, card draw is our friend. Can we find removal for that prairie dog before it gets too big? Not this turn we can't. There's a pretty good chance it's too big by our next turn, unfortunately. Because they can move a uh, gold pan to it. No, they decide not to attack. I think if I were them, I'd be tempted to move the gold pan to the prairie dog and just attack because if I lose my armadillo, pretty sure I lose the game at this point. Snakeskin bale, huh? Well. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I have Snakeskin Veil. Vale. <laughs> if I didn't, this would be game over. But because I do, I've got a bit of a chance here. We want them to pay the ward before we say, just kidding, it has hex proof. Buys us one more turn to try to draw into... Yeah, we still got like three fight effects in our deck. And we're gonna need to draw one here, more or less, or the game's over. Um, Cause the Prairie Dog, well, actually the Prairie Dog will be too big, won't it? No, they played a spell. They played a spell. So we're okay. This might be where they say, guess I'm attacking with Prairie Dog, like I was saying <laughs> on the previous turn, because if I lose the Armadillo, yeah, if I lose the Armadillo, it's kind of game over. But it might be what I just have to do. But after that, if I do that, all these other cards are better than what we have on the board right now. But maybe we just hope to draw into some action, I guess. Because it's not like we can just take nine either. So, yeah. I think we're dead no matter what we do here, whether we block or don't block, but. 
I guess if I draw the plus one, plus one fight here, I'm going to really regret that decision. Maybe that was our biggest out, because that way I kill the prairie dog and hold on to my best creature. Okay, that's not what we did, though. All right, well... I guess just playing another 3-2 is probably what I want to do here. It can block things. And it'll actually be a 4-3. They've drawn most of their lands, so they're going to start, you know, hitting gas, if even more of it. These have first strike, too, because of that knife point, so that's fun. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I don't really have any good blocks, at least not for the 4-3 and the 3-2 right now. Oh, I do have a good block for the 3-2 at least. But yeah, this can attack us now. Our armadillo tried, but he just couldn't hold on long enough. He just couldn't do it. Oh my god, if they crew... <laughs> yeah, if they uh, saddle that with this, they're going to get to destroy something else. That's pretty gross. I guess I can kill it at least. That's probably what I have to do. Do I have to chump something? Wait a second. This is a far better block. Yeah. Yeah, they still get the stupid trigger, but at least I got rid of Fortune. And their board is a lot thinner now, at least. Like, now if I can kill the flyer, feels like I might have a chance. Hey, there's our plunderer. Um, yeah. I don't think giving them a treasure... Well, we don't have to decide till next turn anyway. This only lets you sack creatures, so I'll probably just give them treasures, I guess. So the big problem here is that these are going to have first strike. Yeah, it's not like I can block them effectively, but I don't know what else I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> this did win us one game. That treasure damage that it, it pitched in plus the menace body, like, just gave us the edge we needed, which is kind of, you know, on turn two it's pretty nasty, but it's if you have your opponent low on life late, it does a good job too. We couldn't quite do that, though. Not in this game, anyway. I think you're just supposed to attack with everything, opponent. My hand's empty. You know everything I have. Just, just turn him sideways. Okay, or make it even worse. Yeah, we'll go ahead and scoop. We're dead. <laughs> we are dead. We were dead if they didn't do that. So, But that way they get another trigger out of it and, you know, kill our one of our blockers and kill one of our creatures with the glamour. So we went four and three, that's pretty good. I do kind of feel like the deck underperformed. Like, again, maybe it was confirmation bias, but it seemed like we didn't have the best luck when it came to drawing lands. But uh, four and three is fine. I think that deck was pretty good. You know, we did some fun stuff. Found, you know, uh, some lines to do lethal out of nowhere a couple of times, and that's always fun. So that'll do it for this first draft video. I'll be back with another one on Thursday.